hello to you all. Time again. We're going to try the satellite problem right up here. And we're going to see if we can design a controller for a satellite problem. It's a special kind of problem. There's no damping in this one. It's got a two free integrators in it. So it's a type 2 system. And it's a second order system. So the first thing that we're going to do is draw a free body diagram of the satellite. And the free body diagram of the satellite looks something like this. I don't know if these colors are going to be good enough for us or not, but what we're going to do is we have an F, force F here, and then another force from the thruster here, F, that's the thruster force. That one's a little dim, but you'll have to make do. And then here we've got, uh, it's some distance, there's some distance L here. And what we see is that we know that the uh, force F is equal to some thrust constant K sub T times the voltage V sub C that we're going to put in there. So we'll, we'll see how that works out for everything. Hmm, I can see it. All right. So what we're going to do is we'll make sure that we put our Del Ambert force on here. This is a J theta double dot. I've given you values for all those things. And what we can do is, since those are the only forces now, write the equations in motion, which says J theta double dot is equal to F times L. Um, in this case, F times L is equal to something, so I'm just going to go put that in. This is L KT times VC. So I'm going to put a voltage to my actuator. It's going to open up a little nozzle. The thrust constant is going to squirt gas out. And then I'm going to multiply. That's going to give me a force. I'm going to multiply it times some lever arm, and that's going to give me the rotational moment of inertia, J theta double dot. And now we'll just go ahead and take the Laplace transform. J S squared theta is equal to L K T V C. And then we'll go ahead and get, find out what the open loop transfer function is. I'm going to call that G of S. This is going to be theta over VC. So this is going to be uh, L KT over J 1 over S squared. So there's a constant there. So now we've got our open loop transfer function. We might just check to see what the open loop transfer function response looks like. And if you go and check that, I have used the step command. Use the step command in MATLAB. And what you're going to see is that that just goes up like this. If this is time and this is theta, for a unit step input, it just starts moving. It goes faster and faster and faster. Now, one of the things is that I might like to draw a block diagram for this system. So let's just draw a block diagram. Almost always when you're drawing block diagrams, you want to start, you, you know, you have to know something about these systems. And sometimes you definitely want to maybe start with something that is like the input. So there's the input. Here's VC is going to come in. Uh, I'm going to, when the voltage, when I get the voltage, I'm going to multiply this times a, tor a, a thrust constant, KT. I'm going to multiply it times the lever arm L, and that's going to give me the moment, torque. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm not interested in, the, it, it just turns out that I can see that the torque on this side is equal to J S squared theta. So I can just write that down. And that is J, the torque is equal to J S squared theta. And since I'm not as interested, I'm trying to find theta, the angle of the satellite. I'm going to go multiply by 1 over J. I'm going to multiply by 1 over S. I'm going to multiply by 1 over S. So why do I do this? Because this is J S squared theta. So this is theta S squared. You'll see that I'm sloppy, and I'll, sometimes I'll just say, oh, that's theta double dot. This is S theta. And sometimes I'll just say, oh, well, that's theta dot, because S theta is theta dot. And then here is theta coming out. And then, then somebody might say, well, wait a minute, didn't we learn something about, uh, I'm hoping that I can find really good colors again. Then say, oh, wait a minute, didn't we find, didn't we learn something about controls? Yes, we did. We learned that the best control law to start with is to put a KP, a, a proportional gain, where this is the desired theta, this is the error, plus, I'll put little arrows where they need to be, and this is minus.
and I'll just put that on. There, that's a controller that works almost all the time. Where this is VC is equal to KP times theta desired minus theta. Now, does that work for this system? So, we could go through, I'm just going to quickly go through, it turns out, I have a piece of graph paper right here, so we can draw a root locus for this system. We could do it algebraically and find out that this doesn't work very well, but for the root locus for this system, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at two poles at s equals zero. And that's the number of asymptotes is two, so the number of asymptotes, the angles, this is plus or minus 90 degrees, and the sigma asymptote is at zero. So I can just go through here and draw some, here's the asymptotes. So as I'm making kp bigger and bigger, the roots of the characteristic equation move from zero comma, from two at zero, they move to here. Here's a kp equals one, let's say, kp equals two, let's say, and what I see is that roots here are oscillatory. They don't really help you. All that happens if I look at the response for this particular system, the response for this system is going to look like this. If this is time, this is just going to oscillate. And if I, if I make the gain higher and higher and higher, then the response is just going to oscillate even faster. That's all it's going to happen. So that's no good. What do I do? So it turns out that um, in the problem, then, I give you a hint. And the hint says, the hint says, ooh, I don't know if I like that color at all. That, that one's not very bright. Let's see if I get a different color. The hint says, use this, VC is equal to K, KP times theta desired minus theta. Actually, I should have given you a better hint, because this is a derivative control law. I'm going to put a derivative gain where this is theta dot desired minus theta dot. So it turns out that, again, you know, we don't necessarily know what velocity we want this thing to move at. We might know that we want to sh point our satellite so that it moves it to a specific angle, points at Mars or the Moon, but we don't know what the velocity is, so I'll just set this now for zero, I'll just set that equal to zero. Uh oh no, I hate to do that, but oh, well, zero. That's what I meant to do, not theta. And so, so now, what, what I can do is I can say that VC, this is a modified control law, theta desired minus theta, minus, so the minuses all come out, so this is minus KV times theta dot. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a term into my voltage that's proportional to theta dot. And it turns out here, I've got theta dot here. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this VC. This is actually the voltage that I'm putting out here, VC. I'm going to put a summing junction in here so that I can make this control law in my block diagram. And so here, it turns out here, is S theta. KV minus plus. So that's what that modified control law is. So this is kind of, oh, I gave it to you on an exam. I expect you to figure out how to do this on an exam. I don't know if I should do that or not. But I'm not doing it on an exam now. I'm giving it to you this way. So here you go. So then, one of the things that we notice is that, uh, you know, we're just like super duper control system gurus. Gurus, we know everything about controls. I say, hey, wait a minute. Look at there. Look at here. I can see that this is a loop. And I'm going to use my control system knowledge to break this loop down into its equivalent block diagram. Just trying to see what I'm going to do here. Yeah, let's do it over here. So in my, what, I, what the, the equivalent block diagram, so this is, somebody asked about it. The, what we're looking for is we want to always try to get, that was uh, Ben. Ben, you asked about this, right? So like, hey, wait a minute. What's G? What's H? What's all this stuff? So we're going to get it into a normal control system configuration. G, and then this is H, is the feedback. So G is the feed forward. H is the feedback. Oftentimes, like I like to do it this way where we have a KP here. 
But if we break this, if we cut the loop right here, then it's what we what we want to keep in mind is that we're oftentimes we're interested in the open loop system. The open loop system, which is the open loop system is GH of S. And if we do it that way, what we can do is we can find out that the equivalent transfer function, G prime, I'm going to say, the equivalent transfer function for this little loop is going to be, it's the numerator of G, KT, L, over J, times the denominator of H, numerator of G times the denominator of H, divided by the denominator of G. So I lumped all of these into the numerator. So even though that's in the denominator, it's just a scalar, it's just a number. And so what I've done is I just said, well, you know, these are all just numbers, so I'm just going to put them in the numerator. Numerator of G times the denominator of H divided by the denominator of G times the denominator of H, which is, this is just going to be S plus KV KT L over J. So it's the numerator of G times the denominator of H divided by the denominator of G times the denominator of H plus the numerator of G times the numerator of H. And what I see is, this isn't a very good color. I'm going to get rid of that. That's not a very good color. So what this tells me is that I, 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 uh, another way, I'm, I'm running out of board space, I'm trying to reserve that, is that G prime then is going to be equal to something like this, KT L over J divided by S plus a, where A is equal to KV, KT, L over J. Right? That's what that is. So, so what I've done is I've made it, that's what that A looks like. So, if I go back and just quickly try to redraw my block diagram, it's the same block diagram, right? It's the same block diagram. I'll put an asterisk here. It's not exactly the same block diagram because I've done some things to it, but I'm just going to say here's KP, here is theta desired, that's got a plus, this has got a minus because that's theta, and then it comes in here, and instead of what's in this circle right here, I am going to put in what the equivalent transfer function is, which is just going to be KT times L over J divided by S plus a. Oops, this is theta dot. Uh, it's okay, I'm just going to do it this way. Here's theta dot. And now I'm going to put, I have to remember that I'm going to put this last 1 over s on here too, because I'm still interested in theta. I'm not just going to get rid of that. And theta is what I'm using for my control law, this is, the, this is the simpler control law. I can see that kind of when I put this derivative-based control law in here, I can wave my hands, I can mash up this block diagram, and I get something that looks just like the simpler block diagram that, that, that doesn't have any loops in it, and it's one that we've looked at before. It looks just like our motor system. And in, in this case, what it has is it does still have one, at s equals zero, it has one. Good thing I have a block. Good thing I have a graph paper here. There's still one at s equals zero. There's not two at s equals zero, but there's also one at s equals a. And I think if I'm remembering what my s equals a is, it is like so. Here's one minus one minus two. It's seven fourths. My s equals minus seven fourths. For the numbers that are in this problem, at like 7 fourths. And what that means is I still have two asymptotes. They're still at 90 degrees. But now, sigma A is now, it's the sum of the poles minus the sum of the zeros. And that's going to be at minus 7 eighths. So here is, uh, let's just do it, minus 7 eighths equals sigma A. So what that means is that I can draw my new asymptotes this way. Got my new asymptotes, right? And 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 I can draw my where are oh I forgot to put my pole here. That's a pole. So if I'm looking for real axis segments, I'm just going to put real axis segments. I'm still struggling to get the, any good real axis segments. 
here's real axis segments to the left of the odd number, poles and zeros. And here are the asymptotes. So what I see is that this comes up, one of them comes up this way, one of them kind of goes that way, and we're good. And so here's the root locus. Right? There's the root locus. And then somebody might say, well, I don't know. Where on this root locus is a good place to put roots? So I'm just going to draw a 45 degree line. And if you remember, cosine of theta, cosine theta equals zeta. So this is at zeta equals 0 0.707. That's the damping ratio. That gives that theta is 45 degrees. And so what this tells me is, for this system, for this system, this is a good one. I'm gonna keep this one out over here. I'm gonna start putting good ones over here. For this system, this would be a good spot. Desired root locations. Okay, what gain puts the roots of the characteristic equation exactly at that spot? So what gain that I need to use to start with one plus k p g h equals zero. That means that I'm going to be able to say what kp is one over the magnitude of gh. It, it looks like that. And if I just plug in the numbers, what is what is gh anyway? gh is a complex function and where I can represent the magnitude of the, I can represent that complex function s plus 7 over 4 and this one I can represent it by two vectors that go from the roots of the open loop system to the S point in the S plane that I would like to have my GH be on. So this is S plus zero. And if I just measure how long those are, this is my measuring device, so I can just measure it like this. I'm just going to call that uh, 1.2. So I'm just going to say this distance here is at 1.2. So let me just write this as it's going to be KP is equal to so if you remember what's on the denominator of g h of s, it is, uh, sorry, in the numerator, it's k t l over j. If I'm remembering all my numbers right, this is 0 0.175. And then there's a s plus 0, magnitude of s plus 0, and the magnitude of s plus 7 over 4. Those are the numbers that I'm looking for. 1.2, 1.2. If I multiply that through, that gives me 8.2 is Kp. So if I put a value of Kp in, it's 8.2, it's supposed to give me roots of the characteristic equation that are inside this box. So there's another box down here. I can tell you that it's just there, there's a second box here. There's two, right? They, they always come in complex characters. But I only deal with one at a time. So I'm just, how do I put it at this spot? And so now I can go back in MATLAB and I can check to make sure everything works right, everything's good, I'm all good to go. Okay? So I would predict, then I would just write here, oh by the way, I would predict the time history of this thing. It looks like this. The good news is, so you never get away without doing everything you have to do on a system. And so what we could do is find out what the transfer function is, the output over the input, which is going to be, in this case, this is a kp, kt, l over j, divided by um, 